Democracy, what does it mean to you? What would you do if one day you cannot use your right to vote? This happened to me. Democracy is based on voting, and democracy means that the power belongs to the citizen. As a citizen, I wanted to cast my vote at the last national election, but I was not allowed to. Where am I from for having experienced such an injustice? You might have guessed by my accent that I'm French. So what happened? This is the story. In 2017, I was moving from Lyon in France to here, Luxembourg. But I was still registered as a voter in Lyon. In France, when you cannot vote in your attributed polling station, that was my case, because I moved 500 kilometers away, you must do a proxy vote. That means allowing someone else to cast a vote for you. To do that, you need to fill out a form with all your personal data saying why you cannot vote yourself and who you designate to vote for you. So I did that, I went to a police station, I filled the form, then the police officer sent my mail uh, to the city hall when I'm registered, and then the clerks take note of my delegation and allow my friend to vote. Great, great process, right? It sounds easy. Except that it didn't work for me. Why? Did I make a mistake in the form, or did the police officer never send it? Did the post, postal service lost my mail, or did the clerk never take my delegation into consideration for some reason? I will never know. But what I know is the consequence, is that I lost my right to vote. And I was really upset. Not that I was so convinced by the politician at that time, but still, I wanted to cast a vote, and I couldn't. Did this happen only to me? I start looking for some information, and this is what I found. It seems that in Toulouse, not only in Lyon, proxy voting had some issues. Here, they mention a, bug, a computer bug. Okay, so I'm not alone. I continue looking for more information, and then I found that. In Strasbourg, 70,000 people were just erased from the electoral roll. They were present, they were to the polling station that day, and they were just not on the list anymore. Now we can start worrying a bit. I continue looking more and more, and I found that. In Montréal, in Canada, Here, in the article, that mentioned an insane situation. The insane situation is that only one polling station was open for 57,000 registered voters. So these people queued for a long time that day, but not everyone was able to vote. I can continue the list. Half a million of duplicate voter cards. That means people could have actually voted twice, because they were registered in two different polling stations. I could continue this list for a while, but I think you get my point. There were some issues during this last election. Now, what can we do to prevent all of this to happen? Is there a way to ensure the integrity of the election? Can we actually verify that everything is going on as expected? By chance, guess what? The reason why I was moving to Luxembourg that time was to start a PhD on secure voting systems. So I've got some answers. So in my story, what happened? The thing is that I had a lot of trust assumptions. First, I trusted the police officer to send my form after I filled it. Then, I trusted the postal services to deliver my form on time and not lose my mail. Then, I trust the clerks working in the city hall to check their mailbox, take my delegation into consideration, and allow my friend to vote. And then, of course, I trust my friend to go to the polling station uh, as I ask her, and to cast also the correct vote that I ask her to cast. This is for the proxy vote part. But for the voting part, if you go for someone else at the polling station or for yourself, the process is exactly the same. You go to the polling station, you retrieve a ballot, you enter the booth, and from there, you need to trust the clerks working there to 
allow only eligible voters to cast a vote. Then you trust them to record correctly your vote. You trust them to count all the votes correctly. Then you trust all polling stations to gather the information at a central point. And you trust this central authority to deliver the correct outcome. This is a lot of trust assumption. And if there is one single issue in the process, you lose integrity. If you cannot believe that the process is working, then you need a way to verify this process. And that's exactly what voting research is working on, on verifiable elections. So the idea is that we want to remove as many trust assumptions that we can. So what does verifiable election mean? First, it means that these steps in the process are verifiable. For example, we could verify that only eligible voters can cast a vote. In my case, I would have been able to verify that my delegation was taken into account before it was too late. Then it also means that we would like all voters to get more involved into the process. We would like actually everybody to be able to verify that their vote has been correctly included and recorded. And this is a verification that only you as voter can perform because only you should know your vote. And the more and more people perform this verification, the less and less mistake we will have in the final result. And finally, it means also verifying the, the final outcome. So this is usually done by having a public counting of the ballots or publishing all the electronic records um, that have been done. So now imagine when you go to the polling station, you retrieve your ballot, you put it in the envelope, and from there you can follow it in the ballot box until it's taken out, opened, and counted. Only you know that this is your ballot, so you can verify that it contains your vote, but everybody can actually check that all votes are correctly counted. But now you might wonder that if you can follow your envelope, how do, we, do you know that no one else can recognize yours? Because to be democratic, voting must be secret and confidential. And providing verifiability doesn't make us give up on privacy. The idea is that the proof we provide to you to verify your own vote should convince you. Only you and no one else. So to do that, we use cryptography. Cryptography aims at protecting data by using secrets. And this data will be accessible only to whom it may concern. The cryptographic, the voting protocols that are uh, developed today use many cryptographic tools. They can be based on paper or electronic voting, but they use a lot of cryptographic tools in order to achieve verifiability while ensuring privacy. So the idea is more like this. Imagine that you have a ballot box with a lot of locks around, and you have a key to open it. With your own key and the secret knowledge of which lock you should use, you will get access to your ballot, and you will be able to check that it has not been modified and correctly recorded. To access all ballots and to count them correctly, we distribute the trust between several entities. And these entities with a shared key will be able to open this ballot box, make all the votes accessible for counting and verifying the final result. So this is the idea of verifiable election. To conclude, here I gave France as an example because it reflects my own experience. And we, can, we have seen that the process has some issues. But in other countries and or other voting contexts, the processes can be even more obscure. Open to coercion, that means some people can force you to cast a vote that is not yours. And some people sometimes can risk their life to go outside and cast our vote, even if they have the right to. So here we aim at providing a safe, an accessible, a secure and a usable way to vote and to provide the citizens the tools not to trust, but to verify the system. We want to give more control to the citizen. Democracy is based on voting, but democracy is fragile. And having verifiable election won't solve everything. But it brings a principle, verifiability, that can be used in many other contexts for rewiring democracy. 
Go beyond trust, take control and verify. Thank you.